Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I am finally here with an update. As you can tell, things are a little moved around. So I will give you a little bit of a tour of what's happening and give you some updates. But first I wanted to show you something interesting that I created and it actually worked. So um, if you've been here for a while, you know that I wanted to try winter forcing some tulips indoors hydroponically. And I had actually put in an order with ball uh, color link or ball seeds for uh, the first time, I tried to order the hydroponic trays. Um, I had already ordered bulbs, I had them chilling, stuff like that from a different company, but I needed the hydroponic trays. And so I put in an order with ball, expecting them to come this fall, but they were canceled on me and I wasn't aware that they had canceled my order um, until it got to the point where it was too late for me to to use or to, to replace them or get them in. So I had to figure out what to do. And I started to play around with some ideas on how I could make something inexpensive in case it doesn't work for me. Um, and something I could use that was like just easy that I had access to and I could maneuver in my fridge and I can maneuver on my grow shelves that wouldn't take up too much space. So I came up with this. Um, basically, it's a refrigerator organizer and I took Gorilla Glue. Um, so let me grab it in a sec. So Gorilla Glue is actually, you can use this in aquariums, it's waterproof. Um, I just use a super glue Gorilla brand. And I took some pins like, push pins and I glued them into a refrigerator tray. Now, what I like about this is it has a spot here where I can um, easily tip it to drain it without having to like tip it way over. Um, and also if I had bigger pins, I would be able to have it so that the bottom of the bulb would be in line with this so I couldn't over fill the trays. And so anyway, that was just something I wanted to share with some of you that are interested in the flower farming side of stuff with learning how to do forcing it did work for me i actually did harvest out of this and i'm gonna start some more seeds or some more uh bulbs in these trays to see if i could duplicate that to see if it'll work um so i will keep you updated on that to see just i'm just winging it and uh, i did have an allison bradley bloom and i did have some other little blooms here as well Aren't they cute? So the problem I had with these guys is that they didn't get chilled long enough. So they're short. I do have an update on my anemones. Um, I did uh, start a bunch of my anemones and I was hoping to have them planted into my greenhouse by now. Um, but I ran into, into some problems with my first succession of anemones. I do have them, um, I, I do have some that I was able to get to grow properly and, uh, and efficiently and stuff like that. So um, I think that those are going to be going in later than I wanted to. I like to plant anemones in the ground when they're rooted and no greens are up so that they can kind of establish themselves and go a little bit dormant before they start to push new growth. I found that was very successful for me last year. But um, this year we just ran into some problems and I am delayed, but that's okay. I am doing some work in the greenhouse and I will hopefully next week have an update on that for you of what I'm doing to be more cost efficient in that way um, with heating because I will you know because because these anemones are going to have growth on the top I need to turn my heat on which is a few weeks too early and we still have 20 below you know potentially in the forecast so we'll see oh I gotta show you some of the other exciting and fun things that is going on here. <laughs> Hello, cucumber. Um, we ate a cucumber like this already. It was actually bigger. Um, and there's another one down here. Um, I have some growing up there. There's another one here. They're just all over, just all over the place. So the cucumbers was a success and I'm really excited. 
to be able to say, yes, it worked. What am I feeding them? Two products. I do um, a weekly feed of this stuff here. Well, fish fertilizer. I do a very small dosage of fish fertilizer. And I also use this Analita product. It's a worm tea. Um, I use that as well. And they love it. They absolutely love it. So um, a few other things that I have going on. I have a bunch of greens that are, well, this is bolting. <laughs> that is going to go for the chickens. Um, oh, I should show you the soil I'm growing these cucumbers in before I get too far ahead of it. I've amended these cucumbers in these in these things i've amended them with this type of soil and it's i sell this on my website but you can also find it um, at other suppliers in canada here but and in the us apparently they are branching out but i will show you here what this looks like analita blend plus is what i amended my cucumbers with and they really really went crazy when i added that in We'll take a look at the anemones. These guys, I had sorted out how many, like each tray, and I went through and I threw away a bunch of corms. Um, and any that were rooting and okay, I have them under here. I hate this purple light, but it's what I have um, until some white ones come in or daylight balanced ones come in. But um, these guys are going to be going into the greenhouse very soon. They are what I have left out of my catastrophe for my first succession. And then I have multiple successions. Oh, yeah. The tower gardens. la di da Okay. They're so good. Got some baby lettuce started. Look at that. This stuff grows like crazy. It is um, Swiss chard. But I have a second succession down there of an enemy. And then those are anemone i think yeah those are my third succession of anemone fourth succession of anemone and then down there i have my sixth succession of anemone and ranunculus and they're stacked up there's like uh, a whole bunch of them stacked up on top of each other in the dark rooting these are my baby eucalyptus they got bumped up and they're doing so good these are my stock babies and I had some shoddy germination, but some are late to the party. I needed to uncover them because it was getting a little bit moldy in there from too much humidity. So I needed to uncover them. Um, these are sweet peas. Now, I started them the same time, the same way. And these guys are excellent germination. Um, I, I did everything the same. This is the... Um, the blue reflections and then this one is the perennial mix and these ones just they're they're duds the whole packet is duds so I'm not sure what's going on there um, these guys are germinating I have I don't know what they are oh um, these are peppers and eucalyptus and something else I don't know <laughs> I can't turn it around yet and then these guys here are now these are eucalyptus. Prime blend silver dollar. Yes, those are eucalyptus. So those are still germinating. I don't know what that's. I can't remember what I. Oh, snapdragons. Um, we'll see what this is. Oh, lettuce. Lettuce for my uh, green stock. Hi, LB. What are you doing? Hello, Alps. Okie doke. Cucumber, cucumber. Oh, this is a zucchini and one lone ranunculus that I wanted to see if it would grow in here. And that's that. Um, up here, I have some anemone growing and a ranunculus. So those are kind of leggy. I'm going to have to pot them soon. I do have my, uh, these guys are really, I need to go through and let them dry out. I have a fan going on these directly. Um, these are Lysianthus 
and I'm having some problems with this specific tray. This one is the one from, um, no, this isn't the tray. I think it's this tray. These are the Voyage Lavender and Caleb, uh, Celeb 2 Apricot. They are not as good germination compared to the rest. And then these ones here are doing phenomenal. The Roseanne series always seem to just rock and roll for me for some reason compared to the others. Even though they're started relatively at the same time. Like these ones were started after these ones. And look at the difference. Right? It's just insane. These ones actually came from, um, I, I ordered these seeds that, and I think they originally came from Ball. So um, these seeds originated from Ball and these seeds originated from Johnny Seeds. And just Johnny Seeds, I just, I love their stuff so much. Now look at the difference. They're just beautiful little seedlings. I have lots of algae, but I'll deal with it. You know, one thing, the trick to algae is to let this, the, the soil dry out a little bit, but also cinnamon does work and also watering with chamomile tea and watering in the morning instead of in the evening because um, that just works better. Yeah, look at these guys. They want to live. So, yeah. So, anyway, we have a few updates on the farm. Um, I'm going to actually start putting these in to the root and I will tell you all about them. Okay, so the variety that I'm gonna try today is actually Pineapple Express. I think it's yellow pomponet and um, Sun Lover are the varieties in this mix. They're not technically supposed to be used for forcing. I guess they're on the not good list, but the corms look or the bulbs look really good. They're in my fridge. And I wanted to just try them because they are the best looking bulbs. And if I'm going to have any success, you always want to go with the best looking stuff. So that's what we're doing. Um, so some updates. I'm going to move you so you can kind of see what's happening here. Excuse the cucumber. Um, so some exciting things that have happened this week since I last talked to you. So Chaz, my son, has um, he's been trying out for double A, uh, U18 double A, uh, in a team called the Grand Prairie Reds in Grand Prairie, which is a three-hour drive one direction from here. So it's been a lot of traveling the last few weeks for tryouts. He should learn here very soon what um, whether he's made the team or not. So we're really anxiously waiting for that. So yesterday was a very busy day because yesterday he had his curling zones for the senior boys um, curling team for his high school, the Raiders, and they actually won zones. So they get to go to provincials. So he's really excited for that. I'm just actually... So I'm just taking my little bulb that I peeled off the stuff and I'm just taking it and putting it. You see that? I'm going to just push it right on in. So see it st sticks there. Yeah. So I interrupt myself. <laughs> um, I will fill water up to like this level here so that um, the bulb itself is not gonna be submerged in water, but it can actually root. And these are gonna go back into the fridge to root. But um, anyway, I just thought it was fun, fun to share that with you, how I'm hydroponically forcing these on the cheap without my crates. <laughs> so anyway, um, so Chaz, he had one, uh, they won the zones with his team on curling. And then he went straight to his last tryout for baseball. So it was a busy day yesterday. He started at 8 in the morning, and um, he didn't get done till 9.15 that night with sports. So it was a long day for him, but pretty proud of him for achieving that. And all in the mix of it, he got a 95% on his test. So 
He's he's a smart little cookie, and uh, we're, we're really proud of him. I have a bunch of these started rooting in crates in the shop as well, so I'm I think they will be ready to come out next week to start. Um, actually, they should be done rooting in the shop, and then they'll be able to come in and then start their top growth. So I'm really excited for that. They've been in the refrigerator, and I just put them in soil recently. So I'm hoping it's enough time for them to root and be able to be forced um, in those crates. So hopefully we'll have some more tulips that are a little bit early, kind of a backup. I was hoping to have Easter tulips and I think some of the varieties are fast enough. If it works, I should be able to reach that goal for Easter, um, hoping. And if not, I definitely will have some for Mother's Day, um, or you know, even a, a week or two before Mother's Day, which is fine because we can hold them in the cooler for a couple weeks. So I'm looking forward to that. But I like taking this bottom part off. It just seems they don't, yeah, they like they they do better when you take this little bit off the bottom. I don't know if you're supposed to traditionally, but. I just find it keeps the water cleaner and there's less fungal or bacteria issues. Sometimes I will treat the water with like um, an antifungal and an antibacterial, which seems to be helpful. So these bulbs are massive. I'm trying to make them so they don't touch. Like it's kind of hard because they're so big. But we'll see. But yeah. So it's just this relentless job of forcing tulips. All righty. There they are. Ready for water. I think soil forcing would be much easier. So basically what I'm doing, and I did not take the tulip workshop, it is really expensive for me to take the tulip workshop because I'm in Canada. And quite honestly, um, I'm just winging it. I've been experimenting with doing this um, myself. And I have had some success and I've learned a lot. So I'm hoping that, I mean, obviously there would be a great benefit to taking the tulip, tulip workshop to do this. But um, trial and error is also a great way to learn. And there's actually a lot of resources out there of information from growers and supply seed suppliers or two uh, bulb suppliers that have been doing this t stuff for years that are willing to share that information so it's just a little bit more accessible for me here in canada um with the exchange rate it like what the last time i looked into it it was almost like five grand for me to do everything which is a little bit much for the amount i'm selling of tulips so it doesn't justify for that it's just a little bit too expensive um, unobtainable for a small grower like myself. However, I think it would be a great asset to have that knowledge. And um, but I am just winging it. And so what I've learned is that this tray thing that I have designed does work um, on the cheap. And it's the doing it properly. So the other bulbs, I didn't chill them properly. I didn't root them properly. Um, they were exposed to light prematurely. And there's a whole bunch of things that I did wrong. These ones, I'm putting them in the fridge and I'm keeping them cool um, with water and I'm changing the water every couple days. And then I will bring them out after a couple weeks as soon as I see some good root growth. And then I will bring them in um, for a little bit to not direct light them, but I will bring them in for a little bit and let them start putting on some top growth before I put them under light and start forcing them. So. It is a bit of a process. However, the Allison Bradley, I did this with this tray. Um, the Allison Bradley, I wish I would have took footage of that for you guys, but um, those tulips, they took approximately 50, or, uh, 34 days total from the time I rooted them to the time I harvested it. It was 34 days, um, which was probably slow for the Allison Bradley because it, it probably should have forced faster but it was in the development stage of the rooting that I kind of messed that up but anyways it was just interesting um they're not much more profitable for me to do these right now with my market the the other reason why I'm not doing the tulip workshop 
is because, um, uh, let me get this set up here. There you go. So the reason I'm not going to do the tulip workshop is because I can't sell these tulips for the rate that they I would require them to be for me to actually do this. Like I would not be able to recoup my cost just on the tulips themselves, let alone adding in, um, you know, trying to make any profit on these. I would be doing these for cost essentially to be able to sell them because our market up here won't pay these prices the prices that i would would be required to um sell these and even though that they're a specialty item out of season um the prices that the florists can get them are just really good so um compared to what i can grow them for i mean some of my florists are actually buying tulips bulb or tulip blooms for the price that i'm paying for bulbs right so um it's really hard for me to convince them to buy winter tulips when they can get them so cheap. Um, but the upside is I can grow stuff like this or hopefully, um, or like Allison Bradley's, which they have do not have available to them to purchase. So, you know, got it kind of got to look at it in them, them perspectives. But anyway, <gasps> I forgot to show you. They need water. I forgot to water them because I don't see up there. I'm too short. Pansies, violas. Okay. Let's get a drink. By the way, I found some trays that work really good um, for all my seed starting needs. And I found them in Canada. I found a great source for um, for bootstrap farmer trays. I think that's what they're called. Anyway, I'll share that soon. I gotta pick it up in the post office. So let's get these ranunculus started for rooting.
me today. I hope you had a wonderful Valentine's Day and uh, I hope your spring seed starting is going well. Bye for now.